Wonder Woman's solo movie has arrived to both critical and fan acclaim, but as much as we liked the film, we've still got some questions about its plot, and how it connects to its predecessor, Batman v Superman. Here are a few things we're still trying to figure out. Steve Trevor sacrifices himself at the film's climax, exploding the plane he's piloting in order to keep its payload of deadly gas away from the Germans. It's an effective and emotional moment in Wonder Woman, but it does raise the question of why Steve didn't just land the plane safely away from the Germans, maybe in a field somewhere. Diana had already killed General Ludendorff at that point, and he was a chief proponent of continuing the war and preventing the armistice. So why did Steve die in vain? Of course, the real answer here is that Steve's death serves as a dramatic and memorable turning point in Wonder Woman's life. His death helps cause her full powers to kick in, and his sacrifice also shows Diana that mankind is ultimately capable of doing great good, just as it is capable of great evil. But still, plot-wise, it doesn't make that much sense. We know the obvious answer to this question is because Dr. Poison made him that special elixir. And indeed, actor Danny Houston even explained this to us when we spoke to him recently. Uh, physically, he has the help of, of Dr. Moreau, who uh, comes has these potions, and uh, one of the potions is a sort of elixir for for uh, General Ludendorff, um, and gives them a sense of a sense of power. Um, hence, uh, he can be uh, even more combative. But the real answer is that General Bad Guy's face got all glowy whenever he sniffed Poison's gas, because it was meant to give us the false impression that he was actually Ares. But since the elixir made him strong enough to go one-on-one -on -one against even Wonder Woman, then why didn't Ludendorff have it mass-produced so all his troops could become super soldiers? By the end of the film, Wonder Woman has killed Ares, the war is over, and her great love is dead. So why does she stick around in Man's World and not return home to Themyscira? Sure, we don't know for certain that she didn't go back at some point, since about a century has passed between the war and the modern version of Diana. But the implication seems to be that she chose to stay among humankind, even while she opted out of using her power to fight evil. Perhaps she can't return to Themyscira even if she wants to. Her mother Hippolyta tells Diana that if she leaves, she may never return. Obviously, this could just mean that she fears for her daughter's safety out in the world, but perhaps the Queen meant it more literally. Could it be that piercing the veil that hides the island isn't so easy and Steve's crossing over was a freak accident? Or maybe Diana's just been banished. In the Wonder Woman Rebirth comic, she isn't allowed to return to the island if she leaves. Losing her home is the price she pays to be Wonder Woman and help man's world. And by the way, what is Diana doing these days anyway? She's some kind of antiquities curator at the Louvre in Paris, but could there be more to this job than meets the eye? Perhaps she's tracking down all the Ares-inspired weaponry from throughout history. Batman v Superman makes it pretty clear that something in Diana's past caused her to give up the hero life for a long, long time. And it seems clear now that Steve's death spurred that on. But why? Her journey in Wonder Woman, as we previously noted, has her coming to the realization that mankind is capable of both great evil and great goodness. If anything, Steve's sacrifice should have driven home the notion that a heroic life is the correct path, and that living such a life would be a tribute to the memory of Steve. But instead, it seems Diana went to work in a museum. It's possible that Wonder Woman continued to be a hero for years after the war, and that she only abandoned humanity because of some later dark incident. If so, maybe this is a question that the filmmakers plan to answer in a later film, though they did say recently that they intend to have Wonder Woman 2 be set in contemporary times. This ties directly into the previous question, but it's a pretty big deal if Wonder Woman chose not to fight in World War II. Her activities after the so-called war to end all wars are of course ambiguous, no doubt intentionally so. So yes, it could be that she didn't sit out the war after all, but if even Batman hadn't heard of her until BVS, that seems a bit of a stretch. And after discovering her, all the world's greatest detective could dig up was that one photo of her with her old World War I allies? Assuming she didn't battle the Nazis, then Wonder Woman missed the most important war of the modern era. Weird. This also leads to the question of why she finally decided to put the tiara, gauntlets, and lasso back on and join Batman and Superman in Dawn of Justice. Hitler wasn't enough, but this guy was? For more on Wonder Woman, be sure to check out our review of the film, or watch our chat with director Patty Jenkins about why Wonder Woman kills. And for all things DCEU, be sure to keep it here on IGN.